call the zoning board meeting of September 15th to order. The board tonight is member Stephen Lianus, our alternate Alando Spinola, Fire Chief Brian Nardelli, member Jem Sweeney, myself, Chair Kenneth Galligan. Our building inspector tonight is George DePina. He is also secretary to the board. Our recording secretary is Monica Fragoso. We have one case tonight where an alternate is going to sit in, and that alternate is Jamie Hodges. She will be sitting in on one case. I would ask anyone that's got a phone or electronic device, if you can either silence it or put it on, off, whatever, just so that you don't disrupt the meeting. If it becomes necessary that you need to talk on the phone, I would appreciate it if you go outside the hall, outside the doors to uh, take any telephone calls. Prior to the start of the hearing tonight, is there anybody that wants to withdraw from the meeting tonight? Seeing none, I will tell you that we have not received any communications from anyone that w wants to withdraw, so we have five cases tonight. The order of operations is that when I call the case, the petitioner or the attorney, whoever's going to represent the petitioner would come to the podium. Uh, the petitioner would make the case to the zoning board members. When you have completed your presentation, I will ask if any of the board members have any questions of the petitioner. At that point, when they have their questions answered, I will close that portion of the hearing and now I open up for public discussion. I will ask if there is anyone here that wants to speak in favor. When we're through with that, I'll ask if there's anyone that wants to speak in opposition. When we're through with that, I'll ask if there's any public official that wants to be heard on the issue. Following that, I will close the public discussion and now open it up to discussion just among the board members. At that point, the board members will discuss the case. At some point, a board member will make a motion to grant if it's seconded, we will take a vote. If the vote is five in the affirmative and none in the negative, the petition will be granted. If the petition is four in the affirmative, one in the negative, the petition will be granted. If the petition receives three votes in the affirmative and two in the negative, it will be denied. So at the end of the vote, I will announce whether the petition has been granted or it has been denied. All right, the first case before us tonight is petition number 2283. The petition of Steve Torrey, manager, 41 Arlington Street, LLC, post office box 948, Randolph, Mass, for a variance and special permit for permission to construct a 16 one and two bedroom units and for relief from parking standards in an R3 zone located at 53 and 41 Arlington Street. All yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Attorney John McCluskey representing Steve Torrey on uh, one of uh, two petitions tonight. Both of these are quite similar and they fall under the same uh, uh, ordinance uh, scheme work of, of uh, what you can do on a certain property in an R3 zone. Normally what you're seeing uh, us come before you with is for a variance for the use. <clears throat> and. Uh, in an R3 zone, you actually can get a special permit if you have a parcel that's over an acre of, uh, in size, and you can put in 1,200, one unit per every 1,200 square feet of, of, uh, of area in, on the land. So that makes this a little, un, little bit unusual. So we're, we're looking for actually a special permit in this particular case for the use and for the number of, of of uh, spaces, a uh, number of uh, units, but we're also looking for a variance for the number of parking spaces. And I brought with me a special expert this evening in uh, Mr. Torrey, who, who owns quite a few units in the city of Brockton and, and has had an opportunity to really study and understand what the real function and mechanics of, of uh, having parking versus number of bedrooms. And I'm going to give him the, 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 the uh, microphone in a few minutes. 
But first of all, so this property, uh, we're looking to, um, to, to put in, we're actually uh, in, the, in the application, I, I wanna just clarify a couple of things. Um, the application indicated that Mr. Torrey owns one property at uh, 61? 41. 41 Arlington and, uh, and, and um, attorney uh, Bill Sims owned uh, number 53. Last week they had a closing, so now my client owns both properties. The, uh, the other thing that I, we found out in the title search, and I looked in the examination, uh, my research, and I didn't see anything, but there actually was uh, a prior variance that was allowed uh, back in the early 90s to Dr. John Dano, which has, doesn't have much to do with this. He, he got a variance to allow a, a doctor's office in a residential zone. So not really what we're looking for tonight, but in my application, I indicated that there was, there was no prior zoning uh, app, uh, activity. So this is a 47,821 square foot parcel of land in total combination. At uh, 41 Arlington, which Steve has owned for many, many years, he used to have his office there. <clears throat> He's uh, converted that to all residential and, uh, and he redid the whole building and it's a beautiful residential building. Much of the parking is on site, some is still on the street, occasionally. So by combining these two parcels, he's gonna get the 47,821 square feet over an acre. He's in an R3 zone, it gets him to ask for additional uh, units. Um, there will be a total of 22 uh, residential units on the combined property. He could come, he could avoid coming here tonight and, and uh, raise this building, raise the, uh, the Sims building and build uh, 14 units by right. All he's really asking for is 16 units. And quite frankly, if he, if he built the 14 units by right, he could probably put in easily more uh, bedrooms, but he's not gonna do that. So what we're asking it for is the eight two bedrooms and eight one bedrooms, which is just two units over which would be allowed uh, as a matter of right. So the ask tonight for this property is really fairly minimal and uh, pretty straightforward. Um, so we've met with the city planner on this property uh, we went through the plan, reconfigured the uh, ingress and egress. Uh, Rob May wanted a, a central, uh, we had some ingress and egress on each side of the new building, uh, and Rob, or, or each side of the buildings, and Rob May wanted a central ingress and egress, which is 24 feet, <clears throat> goes up into the back and provides ample parking for um, all of the units. Now, as I say, um, so what we're looking for is 37 spaces, which would be required uh, on, under the ordinance would be 44 spaces. So we're not asking for a big uh, differentiation in the number of spaces. Um, Steve has done a considerable amount of study, uh, although informal, he's not an expert, you know, by, by way of education and certificates, but he's an expert by way of use and, and what he sees on his properties. So what he's, uh, what I'd like Steve to speak to tonight, and it applies to this project and for the next one, the next hearing on West Rossiter Street, is just his uh, explanation of how he came to understand why the amount of parking spaces would be applicable to this, this project. Steve? Thank you. Good evening. I, uh, I think I know everybody in the room, but if you don't, I'm Steve Torrey, and I'm here to work with you to try to get something that I think is worth doing done. John says I'm an expert on parking. I, I take exception to that. I don't, think, I don't think I'm an expert. I have been dealing with tenants and parking for about 50 years. Uh, the first half of those years, existing buildings with existing problems, and the last 20 or 25 years, new buildings that I have built and problems that I've created for myself. 
parking, the, the current parking ordinance um, really doesn't work in my experience. I, I can tell you, I've built a number of 70 some odd townhouses with two parking spaces per unit, three bedroom townhouses. And I have cameras on my property. I have security people who drive by. My, the cameras are monitored by at a central uh, security office. I go by the properties myself and we do tow cars. And if we didn't, if we weren't in that intense in our efforts to control it, two spaces per unit on three bedroom apartments does not work. Um, on the other hand, I've got a 16 unit building on West Rossiter Street that we built about four or five years ago. And that is all one and two bedroom apartments. And I, every time I drive through that parking lot, and that's really what got me thinking about it, there's never, it's never half full. So I really did a study over the last eight months. Uh, we went there sometimes multiple times the same day, at least once every day over an eight month period, physically on site, counted the cars different times of the day, different times of the night. And there's 24 bedrooms there, two, eight two bedrooms and eight one bedrooms. The most parking spaces ever used in any of the times we were there, there were twice there were 27 spaces actually utilized. Once there was 26. At no other time in, over that eight months was there more than 24 cars in the lot. And that, that really got me to thinking about this. And, it, and it, you drive through there and there's a lot of paved space that could be landscaped. I do a lot of landscaping on my properties. And I would much rather do that than put in pavement that you don't need. But in this case, what it proves really is that if you have one and two bedroom apartments, it, you don't need two spaces for each unit. It really, really is dependent on the number of bedrooms that you're building. Um, and that, that holds true. I did the same eight month study on Arlington Street. Never more than 11 spaces were used. In that property, we have 11 bedrooms. So what I'm asking for, I think is, is something very reasonable and it's not to maximize the use of the properties. It's just that I don't want to pay unnecessarily just to create black talk. And thanks for taking the time to listen to me. And I really think the city should, should take a hard look at their ordinance about parking because you shouldn't be able to build 10 three bedroom apartments with 20 parking spaces. It's a nightmare. One, one uh, final thought on that, by the way, is that on Arlington Street, uh, as you know, the Russell Pika Funeral Home is across the street, and they often have a lot of overflow parking on the street. I've parked there a number of times. Um, the current use of this property at, at 53, a lot of the tenants or a lot of the workers, employees there park on the street. So what's going to happen here is that Steve's going to open up the parking in the back take all of that street parking and bring it onto the property. So you're gonna have little if, if none uh, parking on the street, which would help out uh, across the street at the funeral home. So for those reasons, uh, so the hardship by the way, I, I think is basically that uh, because of the ordinance requiring two parking spaces per, per unit, um, that could end up, that ends up being clearly a hardship for a one bedroom unit and for a two bedroom, it, it works fine. So what this comes out to is about 1.5 uh, units per, um, 1.5 parking spaces per unit, which works out great, 37 versus 44. And here's a guy who's been in the city for a long time, enjoys his relationship with the city and, and comes to you with a, with a, a, a true picture of uh, what what he sees as, as a reality in, in the nature of parking spaces versus units. We respectfully request that we get a special permit to increase the number of units by two and to uh, reduce the parking from two to one and a half. Thank you.
Board members, any questions? Uh, yes. Will um, will the units have designated parking spots? Yes. They will. Okay. And for visitor parking, is that going to... Well, is that part of that, the excess... You might want to speak through here. The excess number of units that we have do provide for visitor parking. Over there we have uh, uh, 24 assigned for this for, and 33 available. I didn't hear what you said at the end. You had 24 what? We have 24 assigned spaces at the 16-unit complex, and I believe it's a total of 33 units available. Mm -hmm. Three, 33 parking spaces. Uh, does your plan uh, call for any exterior lighting on the front of the building? If, if all my properties are totally with parking and building. Okay, because this looks like, you know, a relatively large building. Uh, something that would, you know, might cover the entire thing or at least a dull glow off it. Is that something you're opposed to? It's going to be well lit. And totally... Uh, There'll be security cameras that show every inch of space inside and out, except for the units themselves. Will it be lit on the building? Yes. Uh, you spoke. You spoke real quick of, of you'd rather landscape. Does this provide for a lot of green space around the building? It provides for more. It, I mean, we can put in the number of parking spaces required, and s still have landscaping. It's just we have less landscaping and more parking. Again, if you go by any of the properties that I've built in the last 15 years, they still look nice. Will there be any additional blacktop or um, added to the front of the property at all? Or is it just, I see there's going to be a driveway that yeah, is going to be added. In the front, that's all there will be. Okay. It's going to be landscaped. It's going to look nice. It's, um, I'll put in some more of the uh, uh, elm trees like I did on West Elm Street and like I did in front of 51, no, 43, 41 Arlington. I like the elm trees back in Brockton. And, uh, long after I'm gone, there'll be some nice trees. So. What I, did you have a, a plan for um, snow removal? Yeah, just like we do on all the other properties. We have four trucks and 15 people that work. I mean, we clear our own snow. If we get to haul it, we haul it. That year when everybody else was buried and you couldn't get through the parking lots, you could get through ours. Do you have an area, a designated area for the snow? There are some areas on the site, yes, but if we don't have it, generally on the site you have enough snow storage for a 10 inch storm once a week or every 10 days. If we get a two foot storm and then ne the next week we get another two foot storm, what happened, what that repetitively we didn't have real badly. We were hauling snow day and night. Okay. But you do what you have to do. I had a question relative to the size of the apartments. I noticed on the plan that I have in front of you, you see an outside dimension of 80 feet. It's like 80 by 80. Right. So if you've got one, two, three, four apartments across the front of the building, that's each unit is 20 feet wide. Right. And you will use uh, two floors on what, the second and third floor will use be the same apartment? First and second. First and second. Third will be the... Separate one. There's no dimensions here on any of these, and the one I was concerned with is when you look at the first floor, two bedroom unit, you got a stairway that goes from the first floor to the second floor, but you've also got the main stairway that goes from the first floor to the third floor. I just wish I could see some dimensions of what that apartment's going to look like when it's done. And the two-bedroom unit on the second floor, the two end ones, one we're dealing with a stairway, the other end we're dealing with a laundry. I, I'm just curious uh, how you're going to get a two-bedroom unit 
into that space? Well, there, there's more than adequate square footage. Um, and we did several interior designs before, and I wasn't satisfied with any of them. And I really didn't want to spend the additional time until we knew how many units we were going to put in the building. There, there's adequate space for those. They're not going to be tiny. They're going to be small apartments by some standards, but they're, they're not going to be tiny. They're going to be run around the same square footage that, that the ones over on West Rossiter do, based on the square footage that's available in the building. Uh, the one bedrooms over there are about 600 square feet, and the two bedrooms are about 1,200 square feet, and that's what the average is going to be in this building. So, in this unit, or these units on Arlington Street, what, what do you, what can you tell us about the square footage of the apartments? What do you think they're going to be, on average? The average one bedrooms are going to be 600, and two bedrooms are going to be 1,200. Parking places that you've delineated around the building, are those 180 square feet? They are. They are 180? They are. The ones on Arlington are 12, 10 by 18. 10 by 18, yes. Is this building going to be fully sprinkled? Yes, it is. And that's why we don't need a second means of egress? That with, is true. With the sprinkler system. Right. Okay. All right. My question was the size of the parking spaces. My concern was the size of the units. Uh, one thing that we like to have considered here is spaces where visitors can come and park if they come and visit. And you're telling us that basically, according to code, there is more than enough parking, so there would be spaces for visitors if they came. Uh, with the one and a half spaces per unit that we're asking for, there is still adequate visitor spaces in my opinion. They, we would normally see 24 spaces used as a maximum, and there's 30 some odd there. 33. 33? Th 37. On the new building. So you're proposing 37, and if it was two, you'd need 44? Yes. I believe that's the correct I'm one. Just I'm sure. not as good at math. Enough. 30, uh, my memo indicates 37 spaces are what we have. Right. right. Okay. That's your, what you're proposing. Right. As opposed to the 44. Board members, any other questions? Everybody's good? Okay, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is anyone here that wants to speak in favor? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? Yep, please come forward and give your name to the clerk. Uh, good evening. My name is Angela Gonsalves. I'm a resident of the single family at 40 Arlington Street in Brockton, directly across from 41 Arlington. Um, I just was here um, to give my opinion in opposition of Mr. Tory's proposal, um, not because I don't think it's a good idea what he's doing, but just because from a standpoint as a resident of a single family on that street, um, I just wanted to give a little bit of perspective um, what it's like to live on that street in a single family home. Um, so the house 40 Arlington is directly beside uh, Mr. Russell's funeral home. Um, and we see a lot of traffic uh, in when he has his funerals. Um, as we know, funerals are never predicted. Um, so at any point in time, there could be an overflux of cars and he has a substantial amount of parking within his property. But as we all know, uh, there's a lot of parking that goes on within the street portion of it. 
Also on the end of the street, um, there is a church at the end on the opposite side, on the side of West Elm, which they have their Bible studies, they have their um, masses and um, all of their masses that go on within the week, which we also see an overflow of parking within the street. Um, so as a resident, when we come in um, into the family home, we often have to park, you know, visiting grandparents and things like that on the street. I right now currently reside at Fort Arlington and I myself sometimes, depending on the time of the day, have to park on the street as well. Um, if there are family members um, visiting the home and things like that. So my parents uh, own that house since 2010. Um, and just to give a little bit of perspective of what he's saying, in general, any space, any home um, with visitor parking, the driveway holds about two to three cars. And I myself sometimes have to park on the street. So if, you have, if you're adding an additional 16 units that's being proposed, if you have any um, possible visitors, as you do see at my residence as well, you're gonna have street parking, which is not gonna be towed, right? Even though they will tow within their own property, the amount of people that park on the street will not be towed and it will cause um, issues with parking when Mr. Russell has his um, events going on and when the church has their events going on, it makes it very difficult as a resident who lives on that street um, to park. You know, other issues that um, he himself brought in was the visitor parking, which we all know, as well as snow removal, which was brought up um, by you guys. Personally, I think that if he does have the appropriate space to pave um, that and get adequate parking for his proposal, I think it would be in the benefit for everybody on that street. I can't speak about, you know, Mr. Russell or, you know, the church or any other resident. I can only speak for myself. But I think in general, living on that street, it would be better if he had the, if he has adequate space to pave as that beautiful property that he has at 41 Arlington Street that has very nice landscaping in the, in the front. And substantial amount of paved in the back. Um, if he's able to do that and get adequate parking for his proposal, I think he should do that. Um, I think it'll just benefit everybody on the street and it won't create any animosity um, towards any of the neighbors um, on the street because I don't wanna see you know, things happen to Mr. Russell if he's not able to do anything or a church has to do this or we have to move or anything like that. You know, we didn't oppose him turning 41 Arlington Street into a multi-type um, family unit. Um, and he did a, a great job. The landscaping is beautiful, it's clean. The parking is never a problem there. So in my opinion, if he has the ability to create paved um, parking on that street, I think I, I would not be opposed to that, but I would be opposed to allowing him to create 16 units, which would create a substantial amount of additional parking within that street. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Lisa Frederick and I own a home at on 30 Arlington Street. And I've actually owned that home over 20 years now. My children, my brothers and sisters all grew up in that home. Um, as well as Mr. Jerome, I don't know if he's gonna speak, but he will be, his home, um, he's been there more than 20 years. Could his you speak home, just a little bit louder? Um, is this better? That was better. Okay, I'm not sure what you heard or didn't hear, but I've been there over, I've been there over 20 years. Um, my whole family, my brothers and sisters grew up there. I'm, I'm raising my children there. And eventually, hopefully this will be their, their home. I'm hoping to pass that on to them. Um, the young lady who is, um, her parents are my neighbors. We're all pretty friendly with each other, know each other for many years. Um, my concern besides just the parking is just the traffic in general. We have a lot of small children. Anytime you go down this, our street, you, at any time you can see small children outside playing, riding bikes. Um, they wait for the ice cream truck that comes around. They go behind the ice cream truck. I'm just <laughs> really concerned with the extra traffic and the small children. It's a really nice, um, family friendly, mostly um, owner occupied homes. And 
Um, my concern is just just the extra traffic, not just this, the, the, the people and the cars, visitors. We already do serve the, um, the church on one end and the funeral home on the other end, which is fine because it's not permanent. It's something that, you know, once in a while. So that's, that's the only thing I'm concerned about. It's a beautiful, what you did with the property. Now it's beautiful. I'm just concerned about all the extra things there for the children coming up. Very good, thank you. Thanks. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition? Good evening, everybody. Um, Pastor Orlando Harris, uh, the church, the young lady was speaking about New Life Christian Church right on the corner there. Um, well, you said opposition, so I'm, I'm 4951. The 51 opposition is definitely the parking. Um, Russell, Dave Russell and I, we have a great, great, been there, I've been pastoring 28 years there. So the conversation whenever there's a funeral, whenever we have revivals or major events, we communicate one another, one another and we work it out. Um, so the 51 is against the opposition, the parking. That's the, my major concern. Uh, the 49 that is for is basically, hey, more people in the neighborhood, more people can come to the church. So I'm, <laughs> I'm 49 for, but 51, 49 for, 51 against. And, and that's just that parking situation. Where is your church again? Uh, I'm at the corner of West Elm and Arlington, right there on the corner. It used to be- The old synagogue. Uh, yeah. You beat me. Temple Israel. Yeah, yeah so, so now it's okay. Brockton, Brockton New Life Christian Church. All right. Very good, thank, thank you. Thank you for your time. Is there anyone else that wants to speak in opposition? Seeing none in the close that portion of the hearing, is there any elected official that wants to be heard on the issue? Councilor. Hi, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Maria Savares, uh, Ward 2 Councilor. I'm here to speak in favor about this project. As far like Mr. Steve already uh, go all the details and all the definition, and then I believe he answered all the question, and it is very clear. And then also I understand the concern about the parking space, but I'm totally believe like Mr. Steve is gonna work with you guys about parking space, and then um, definitely I'm support this project, and uh, you know, that's what I'm here for. And then I hope uh, you guys take this in consideration for that of Brockton and for the communities as well. And uh, Mr. Steve, you've been always great with the community. Uh, I've been working as a code enforcement. I deal with a lot of main trouble property, but I never deal with this property. He always maintained. Um, if you guys drive by all the property he does have, he knows how to take care of all the property. And uh, that's why I'm here to support that. And then this is what I understand the concern, but I believe Mr. Steve will work with them, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other elected official that wants to be heard on the issue? Councilor. Hello, um, Councilor Rita Mendez. I did speak with um, the owner of this project and then he showed the graph and all the um, parking there, which um, seemed to be what he's proposing to be sufficient. But then tonight I also heard the residents. So we'll be uh, working with them to see if regarding the parking issue there. But it, it seems like at this point, it, uh, what he's proposing is sufficient for what he wants to do. So I'm in favor of this project and I want you to consider it but we're also gonna be um, speaking with the residents and, and just and also with the pastor and everybody there because I only um, had an opportunity to hear from them tonight as well. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other elected official who wants to be heard on the issue? Now I'm gonna close that portion of the hearing that concludes the public discussion on the issue. I will now open it up for discussion among the board members. I think the... Uh the resident said it quite elegantly um, in terms of how, th what they have to deal with it, with the funeral homes when they have a funeral. That's a very unique situation. Uh, we're really talking two units. Uh, he's gonna build 14 anyways. So we're talking two units and if it could be extra parking, that's how I see it. Yeah, from what I understand, um, 
he does have the option to add enough uh, parking spots, but he's choosing you know, to uh, improve the property with the green space, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. um, I can't hear you up there, so just a little louder. I'm sorry, I said I think it's, um, I think he said he has the option to add the more parking spots, but he's choosing to go with the, uh, the green space, which I think is great. Um, because from, uh, from his experience, he says uh, may not need all the parking spots, so. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I said. I, I just think, Steve, in that situation, when you have a funeral and the street is jammed, you need the extra spots if you live there. That's just my thought. Yeah, I think what I'm worried about is like that perfect storm of situation where um, there's something at the funeral and there's gonna be uh, residents with guests over. Uh, so if there was some type of like, I think there needs to be like, for it to happen, it would need either additional parking or there would need to be some type of like work with traffic uh, commission or something to see if there's something that could work. But right now it seems tight. All right, let me play devil's advocate. <laughs> I think this board continually complains, not complains, voices their concerns about the fact that we deal with parking lots and parking lots running into streets and no curbs and a number of different mm -hmm. things. I think when you look at Mr. Torrey's property on West Rosetta, um, you see that he, he's limited as to what he could do. And I drove by other properties to just kind of wrap my mind around a lot of this. When you look at West Rosetta, he didn't have a lot of options. He has what he has and he has to get so much parking in that spot. He did landscape. When you look at his property on West Elm Street, when you compare and look at the big picture, the landscaping is beautiful. Now, I, I, I understand the parking concerns greatly. Again, from a public safety perspective, it's a nice wide street. So I look at it, can I get a fire truck down there? Can I, how am I gonna move apparatus in that area? So, so I, think, I think we have to look at, my opinion, is we have to look at a bigger picture of, sometimes we can't have bites on both sides of the apple. Um, and I, I completely understand the homeowners, um, owner-occupied homes, their, their, their concerns deeply. I, 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 wouldn't, I, I would be concerned as well. Um, I don't know if there's a middle ground here, Mr. Chairman, we can look at and, and, and see how we can work that out. I don't know if spaces could be added, but I think, I think we have to um, understand sometimes the, the projects that have already been done, seeing those projects. I, 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 com I completely understand what, you're, what everyone's saying though about the perspective of the funeral home and the perspective of the church and things, but th those, are, those are occupancies that are already there. The councilors are willing to work with the residents in regards to the parking situations, and I'm sure Mr. Torrey sounds like he's open to suggestions that they've, 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 they've spoken to him. So I, I think, I, I don't wanna have a black and white vision of this. I, I think there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a broader look at this. That's just my opinion. Well, I think we have to realize that he has the ability to develop this project with 14 units. He's here tonight asking for 16 units. There was some discussion about adding additional parking and he mentioned to us that he is in favor of green space. And when you drive down Arlington Street, I think it would be a shame if mm -hmm. that front lawn was taken out and additional blacktop was put in in order to create more parking. According to our code, if two apartments were lost, if it went from 16 to 14, you would pick up four spaces. He needs 44, he's got 37. If two come out and you lose four, you've actually hit down to 40. So the difference between 40 and 37 is different than it is from 44 to 37. Um, so I, I just wanna make sure that we understand that when you say there are two bites of the apple on this one, that really in effect, he's asking for 16 units if if he doesn't get the 16 units, he can still proceed with the project with 14 units. And he could actually create the exact same amount of parking that he's got, but he would actually gain parking spaces because he would have less units. So, motion to grant and hope as it fails. Second. All right, motion has been made and seconded to grant. Will the clerk please call the roll? 
Mr. Leanis. Yes. Mr. Spinola. No. Mr. Sweeney. No. Chief Nardelli. Yes. Chair Galligan. No. Chair, we have two in the affirmative, three in the negative. All right, the vote is two in the affirmative, three in the negative. The petition is denied for 16 units. All right, the next case is 2284, the petition of Steve Torrey, manager, West Rosetta Village, LLC, Post Office Box 948, Randolph, Mass, for a special permit and variance to construct nine one-bedroom units and for relief from parking standards in an R3 zone located 20 West Rosetta, 30 Falmouth Avenue, and 0 Falmouth Avenue. Council. Good evening, members of the board. Again, Attorney John McCluskey on behalf of Steve Torrey. Um, this is a similar, but obviously a little different situation. Um, Mr. Torrey owns property, uh, basically three combined lots uh, on uh, West Rossiter and Falmouth Ave. 20 West Rossiter, 30 Falmouth Ave, and zero Falmouth Ave. This is uh, uh, in, in an R3 zone, so again, we have the ability to put in uh, a number of units. Um, in this particular case, we have 48,484 square feet. So we're over the one acre for the, um, for the special permit. Um, we're looking for a total of, um, I'm sorry, already existing on the property are 18 apartments. This is the property that Steve really spoke to earlier as far as his observations of the parking and the fact that it was really what he's got is one bedroom, one space used throughout the whole, whole uh, system at this point. And what he's looking for is to reduce the 2.0 parking spaces to 1.5. Um, at the end of the memo, you can see a, um, a, a chart consisting of three, I'm sorry, four pages of the counts that Steve has taken over a long period of time, 19, uh, 2021, uh, 2022, uh, uh, sorry, September 2021, March of 22, and November of 21, and January of 22. Basically, those, the charts that he's laid out shows that you don't have more than one parking space per unit, per bedroom, I'm sorry, per bedroom. So in this particular case, again, um, Steve could uh, build an, an additional three unit building, each having four bedrooms. So that would be 12 additional bedrooms by right. He doesn't have to come before the board to seek that uh, permission at all because under the R3 zoning, he could put in uh, three units with 12 bedrooms. What he's really proposing now, though, is nine units with nine bedrooms. So he's, he's asking for a reduction in the amount of potential bedrooms versus the special permit for the actual amount of apartments. So he could, as in, as in Arlington Street, he could build apartments that exceed what was presented to you tonight on the earlier case and, and in this case. So um, what we're basically asking for, is, and, and not to go through the whole argument again, but uh, basically re reiterating the same, same situation, and that is we're looking to allow uh, for additional, additional apartments, which would result in the net result of less bedrooms. We're looking for nine additional one-bedroom apartments. And uh, there's more than adequate space. The, the interesting thing here is on, 
on, uh, if you look at the parking scheme that Steve is, is presenting or proposing, right now he could, he could place and has actually placed uh, a whole bunch of parking spaces right on Falmouth, uh, which is a very narrow street. What he's proposing to do is taking those parking spaces away from the street, bringing them closer onto, onto his property so that he'll give some relief to that parking situation, which is very narrow on Falmouth. So if you can see on the, on the, on the plan on Falmouth, he's got pay, presently parking spaces 34 through 41. Those will be eliminated and pushed back off the street to 33 to 40. And so they're roughly giving, looks like 10 or 15 feet uh, better access uh, down along uh, Falmouth. Uh, again, Steve has spent a lot of time on this property looking at what he has for existing parking versus uh, what he can do to improve the situation. You know, this is, this is a guy who prides himself in beautiful properties uh, very clearly, um, he's always on top of the security, uh, monitoring the parking, making sure that the people that are living in the properties are, are enjoying them and, and, and they're, they're beautiful properties. So what we're asking for, quite frankly, is, is an, a few additional uh, parking, I'm, I'm sorry, apartments and a 1.5 ratio for parking, which as the numbers would, would show out and play out, clearly merits uh, and warrants that in this particular case. Board members, any questions? Uh, so he's proposing to move the parking spaces further away from the street, Falmouth. from Falmouth Street. So if you've driven down Falmouth, you'll see that that's pretty narrow. Yeah. And he's really making quite an improvement on the on that area and the green space will be maintained to the same amount that it is now or would it be a decrease well, of green space well what steve most of the time does is he always ex we're not looking for any any uh, uh we're not looking for relief from green space uh by any means um what we're what we have here is we need 25%, he's proposing 33%. So he's far exceeding the green space that's required under the ordinance. Thank you. About 20 years ago, we had this existing two unit building come before us at 30 Falmouth Avenue to convert that from a single to a two unit building. The zoning that we approved was for four parking places with a green space that went from the building out to the sidewalk. So there was two parking spaces to the left, two parking spaces to the right. The other agreement was when that was put in was that there would be a fence that would be put along the West Rosetta Street property and all access to the existing two unit building on Falmouth Avenue would only be from Falmouth Avenue. That was the stipulations of what we voted on 20 years ago. So just be aware that there has been zoning on this. Yeah, I was not aware of that, yeah. Yeah, I got the call. You know, sometimes when you, when you search the registry records, uh, they're, they're doing a better job these days of putting the address in and you can find it a little easier. Of course, you can find it easy in, in, the, in the building department or easier. I actually normally make a call to the building department and ask, and then I check the registry records. I didn't come up with anything. Unfortunately, I remember a lot of this in my head, so <laughs> <laughs> not to be wise. Was I the lawyer? No. <laughs> Should be just, I just want to make sure everybody understands that there has been zoning on this particular property and the stipulation was that there would be four parking places coming in from Falmouth Avenue with green space going from the two unit building out to the sidewalk line, two spaces on the left, two spaces on the right. Now, since that was done, this property at uh, 20 Rosetta Street was developed. And I think when that went in, 
that might have been uh, under a special piece of legislation that doesn't exist anymore, if I'm right. It, it didn't have to come before zoning. It never oh, quite right. Quite right, correct, yeah. So that unit went in there without ever coming to zoning. So we had nothing to do with that particular building. In the plans that I'm looking at here, it looks like the sidewalk on the east side of the building, around the corner of the building, to the north side of number 20 West, West Rosetta Street is going to be relocated in order for space along the north side of number 20 West Rosetta Street, that sidewalk has got to be removed in order to make room for the driveway. That puts the driveway pretty much right up against the building at number 60 or number 20 West Rosetta Street, the way I read it. Is that how you see it? When I went up there, I, I've driven through there numerous times, and unfortunately, I did see a car parked in the fire lane on the north side of that building where the, it's proposed to move that sidewalk. And I know Mr. Torrey has done a lot of work in the city. The work that he has done is very, very good. He's a very reputable developer in the city. But uh, I just want to ask the question to make sure I understand this, that in order to make that fire lane work and a passing lane on the north side, that sidewalk has to come out, and the, actually the black, blacktop driveway is going to come right up against the side of that building. So the, the black, the uh, green space trees that are against the building, between the building and the sidewalk is going to get eliminated. And I just want to bring out the fact that uh, the parking that you're showing on Falmouth Avenue, uh, that is in opposition to what was granted 20 years ago when we did that family houses so I just want to make sure you understand that all right board notes any other questions everybody's good okay I'm gonna close that portion of the hearing is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition yes please come up and give your name to the clerk Hi, my name is Natalia Montilla. I'm a resident at 36 West Rosetta Street. What number? 36. Um, I just um, wanted to make sure that um, I came up here and presented my case or my point of view. Um, bef when I've been there for 20 years. When I moved there, this was a nice dead end street. I was the last house on the right hand side and there was uh, the 20 uh, West Rosetta uh, lot was just an empty lot. So we were fortunate to find a nice dead end street. Um, I do remember when the house on Falmouth Street was changed from a single to a, uh, a two family home and they closed the entrance on West Rosetta Street. We were grateful for that, but come to find out they are building 16 units or they built 16 units. Um, the traffic in that tiny street, this is a seven houses um, street on both sides. And only one of them is a multifamily. Before this um, 16 unit went up, now the traffic is terrible. Um, I live right next to it. Parking, we get people park on the streets from that unit. Um, at all night, uh, at all hours of the night, we hear people arguing. We hear people blasting music in their parking lot. Uh, we have people park on the street, have parties on the street. The people that live in that unit, the 16 unit uh, condominium. So it's been really hectic and very busy. Um, on that street. I no longer allow my son to play on the street or close to the street. People drive by. This is a tiny short street if you look at West Rosetta Street. People drive by 45 miles an hour. So it's, we have to be extra careful, careful with the kids uh, playing on the street. Um, when the unit was... Uh,
all the noise and people from that building having parties in their apartments, cleaning up and throwing the garbage over the fence to my uh, property. So it's been uh, very hectic, um, very stressful. The amount of car break-ins in that neighborhood went up. Um, and um, in the last year, we had two break-ins. And these are people that go from this, the beginning of the street all the way around his property and open all the cars and steal and make, you know, do damage. We never saw that before, before the unit came up. So I'm just concerned that with more units coming up, it's gonna be terrible for the people that live there, single family houses, that, uh, people that live there with kids or have been there for a long time, we're not gonna have any peace anymore. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wants to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there any elected official that wants to be heard on the issue? Hello again, and good evening. My name is Maria Tavares, a Ward 2 Councilor. Uh, I'm here to speak in favor. Basically, I, uh, I just don't have a concern. I, uh, I remember, like, you know, before I worked as a court enforcement, um, the place, like, you know, Mr. Sif, uh, build the property, which is looking so beautiful um, right now. And uh, basically, even the, the street, the, the neighbors change. I totally understand, like, you know, her concerns, stuff like that. But before, if you guys look on the record, there was a lot of phone call about uh, prostitutes, uh, like, you know, so many, like, you know, happen. Uh, police always involved, fire department, and you know, so much stuff. But as of right now, like, you know, since he take over, like, you know, this has never been happen again, which is, I'm just kind of, I'm not saying like, you know, I'm just totally understand uh, because it's all about the community, it's all about the concerns as well. But um, it's just like, uh, you know, he does tremendous work and then he always in compliant, like I said again, and then I, I don't see the reason the residents should have parked outside because he has enough of parking space, well maintained, and then he has a security, like a 24 hour, like, you know, we, I'm telling you, we don't have like, you know, four like, you know, people in Brooklyn, let me tell you, like Steve, because he does, a lot, he does have a lot of property, but he does uh, really taking care about his property. And then I wish like, you know, we kind of just, gives opportunity because uh, it's good for Brockton again, it's good for tax, it's good for the community, it's good to, you know, especially I'm talking about Ward 2. Ward 2, like, you know, I've been dealing with a lot of stress, like, you know, the, the, the landlords, the, they don't take care about the properties. I've been dealing with a call like every single day. That make my job so little harder because it's trash and debris, the wound doesn't care, but it's just like, you know, we need to find some way to kind of work as a team, work and uh, have more communication, work as a partnership. And uh, I'm going to kind of talk to you, uh, see how can we work together and have a better community and give you investor or business owner, have more opportunity to invest in Brockton. It's just like, you know, uh, I think you guys should take in consideration not to push everyone away because, you know, at the end of the day, everybody's going to give up and quick. And, uh, you know, again, um, I hope you guys take this in consideration and give opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. I think during the presentation, I did not ask of the attorney what the hardship was on this property. If I did, I think I missed it. <laughs> Do you want to address that? I'm sorry? Do you want to address that? Yeah, thank you. hardship as well. Uh, by the way, this, um, this uh, project did go, we did a couple of meetings with uh, 
Rob May at the planning department uh, to discuss uh, this project. And, and uh, so, um, and, and he was favorable for it. So in, in the situation, what I, in, in this case, what I uh, basically say in my memo is that we meet a lot of the, the parking requirements as it presently exists, but we have a situation on Falmouth that the parking really is sort of bad and that it's so close to the street. As the woman testified, there's a lot of traffic on the street. People going 45 miles an hour is not, not necessarily anyone that lives on the street or owns property on the streets, uh, you know, they're not as a result of that ownership. So the, the hardship is the fact that we're now able to move that away. And if we could get less spaces, 1.5 per, per, um, per unit, uh, that that would satisfy the, the uh, parking situation. The hardship really is, of course, we don't need it for the special permit. It's just uh, a different standard, but it really only applies to the parking. So that's the, the Falmouth Ave uh, situation and, and benefiting that. Okay, very good, thank, thank you. you. All right, that will conclude the public discussion portion of the hearing. I'm now gonna open it up for deliberations by the board, board members. I, I can easily see uh, from what the neighbor described in the guts it took to get here to, to say how she felt about it. So that has to be considered. Um, it's a it's a tight squeeze over there. I don't know how you guys see it. But. Yeah, unlike the last uh, case, it is a denser denser area and it's a very tight fit. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think there's you. On one hand, you have an overgrown lot that there used to reside a home there that we was like the eternal flame for many years. We, I think we had probably five or six fires in that house um, over the years, and now it's dilapidated, gone, and it's a it's it's a dilapidated property. Mm. Again, in my juxtaposition, Arlington Street. My biggest concern is is the narrowness of the street for my fire apparatus. Um, obviously, infrastructure wise, nothing can be done about that because of the way the houses are built currently. Um, but I, I, we have concern, we have issues on that, on that street now as it is getting apparatus moved on that street, um, and getting apparatus into position. We've had fires on that street. Um, and it, it it's always a challenge with, with, with the width of that street. So it, it, again, from a public safety perspective, that's my concern. I understand where those, those, and it looks very nice how those will be moved off of the street. My, again, my concern is though visitors and people of the like now visiting that road. Um, I, I drove down, I've been through by the property a number of times and they've all been in the middle of the day and there's cars parked right on that road that narrow it even more. There's no parking signs, might in a couple of spots, obviously not being observed. I, I, I understand parking should be observed, parking, no parking should be observed, but at 3 a.m., that's a difficult position to be in when you're trying to move a, you know, four ton ladder truck down that street to get it into a perfect position and maybe pull someone out of a house across the street. So I, I, th those are my concerns. Um, I, I think the properties are beautiful and, 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 th and that's just the, the difficulty of that in the parking situation currently lends to my, my, my trepidations moving forward with that. One of the concerns I have is the fact that there is prior zoning. We delineated parking for the original building of four spots. The, the lot that he's proposing to develop up here really would benefit from some kind of development because it's quite a mess up there right now. Absolutely. I just don't think that the, pro the, the proposal that's before us is the right proposal for that piece of property that perhaps could be developed into something with, with less density. Uh, it, it's a shame that it's going to affect uh, the driveway on the building at 20 West Rosetta Street. Uh, he's obviously trying to tie them all together. 
So in one respect here, the idea of the original zoning was to separate Falmouth Avenue from West Rosetta Street. And in the proposal that's before us, it's opening that up and encouraging uh, pedestrian traffic between the two streets. So you could actually have a situation where people will be parking at 20 West Rosetta Street when they're going to the building that's on Falmouth Avenue or vice versa. Um, all of these cars that are lined up in front of number 30 Falmouth Avenue, uh, there is no curb cut. They just randomly back out into the street. And what we don't see here is if he pulls those in real close to the house, that obviously eliminates the green space that's in there, but it may also entice somebody to park behind another car. So if you were parked in space number 36, shall we say, and uh, somebody wanted to come in and visit or whatever, they could park behind your car and actually be two cars deep. So now the back of the car is out to the street. Uh, it is a very dense area up there. My experience over the years, we've had some pretty good fires on that street. Uh, the, the expansion of that single family to a two unit, we felt was acceptable because it's a multifamily area. And we were very specific about being careful of re representing parking spaces that are usable for that house, which was two, plus also maintaining the green space. So what's going to happen now if this goes through is Falmouth Avenue basically will be a sea of blacktop in the front and the accessibility to get into that house is, as we know in the past, we like to have an opening from the front door directly out to the street level so that if there's a fire or if there's a medical emergency, we don't have to be dealing with walking between parked cars. There's going to be an opening somewhere to get through there. So. I have some serious issues with it. Uh, I like the work that Mr. Torrey has done in the past, but I think what we're looking at, in my opinion, as one opinion, I think what's being proposed here is just too big, too dense for that piece of property. Motion to grant. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to grant. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Leanis. No. Mr. Spinola. No. No. Mr. Sweeney? No. Chief Nardelli? No. Chair Galligan? No. Chair, that is five in the negative. Zero in the affirmative. All right, the vote is no votes in the affirmative, five in the negative. The petition is denied. Next hearing, uh, Fire Chief Brian Nadelli is going to recuse himself from the hearing, and in his place will be Jamie Hodges, alternate member. So the next case coming before us is 2285, the petition of Diesel Direct, LLC, 74 Maple Street, Stoughton, Mass., for a variance from Section 2729 for permission to use the property as a truck terminal in an I-1 zone located at 85 and 93 Mill Street. That is a misprint. That's fine. This is located in a C2, correct? Correct, it is. It is. The, yeah. the variance we're looking for is to have an I-1 use in the C2 zone. Right. But the, the paperwork that I got here says it's in an I-1 zone, so that's a misprint. So it is in a C2 zone. Correct. Correct. Yep. Okay, please identify yourself and make your presentation. Uh, good evening. My name is Chris Worthy. I represent Diesel Direct, LLC. Um, we do have a couple, three uh, representatives of Diesel Direct here with me tonight to help answer any questions that the, uh, the board may have. Uh, as a brief background, Diesel Direct is a 
a company that was formed in Massachusetts. It has now grown to be a nationwide company that delivers diesel fuel to primarily commercial uh, businesses. And uh, we are under contract to purchase this property from the current owner. And the intention is to use it as the new local regional operational headquarters. They do have an office office building as the, the office headquarters that's still in Stoughton where they're currently located. But this the intention here is to purchase this property use as the, the operational headquarters in this area. Um, the, the property where they have been for a while is not owned by the company and the current owner is looking to sell it. So which is why we, we need to move. Um, the, the reason why we're here today is that we were trying to determine what, how our use fits in with the ordinance. And while we did see a lot of similarities with some commercial uses that may be allowed as of right, we did feel that the most pertinent or the most apt use is the, as a truck terminal, which is an I-1 permitted use. And obviously we're in a C2 zone here. Um, the, my understanding of the background of this property is that the, it was back in the 90s at least, was a industrial zone. And that around the time that the, the medical center nearby was constructed, the, the town changed the zoning to accommodate the building of the new center. And it did um, change the zoning for this property. You'll notice that across the street from it is it remains I-1, which if we were happen to be across the street, we feel like it would be allowed. Um, and so we're not really looking to change the general use of it. We're, we're trying to continue and, and we feel like our use would be in, in conformity with the historical use and the current use of the property and other properties in the area. So essentially that, that change from a industrial zone to a commercial zone created a hardship for the, the current owner of the property if they wanted to make any change to, or even a slight change to their use, which has historically been primarily in a, an industrial use. Uh, as, as further background of Diesel Direct, they, what the use would be is as primarily parking for their fuel delivery trucks. They would, uh, the employees would come here to, would come to the property to take the trucks to pick up fuel for the deliveries for that day, deliver it to the customers, um, come back to the property, often with fuel on the truck for the next shift to pick up to deliver to customers, but never for, for very long would the, would the trucks be at the property with fuel in them. Um, it, we're looking for the, the number of trucks that would be at this location are somewhere in the range of 20 to 25. Uh, I think they have 21 at the moment. Um, and there are, I believe, 15 drivers on staff for, the, for all shifts. So you can see that there won't be, a, there wouldn't be a huge number of in and out during the day. So they're, they're looking to continue kind of a, a similar use of the property as, histor as it has been historically, but we just were concerned that the, the use would be, could be deemed to change and could be deemed not, to be not permitted, which is why we're seeking this variance. Um, the, the location of the property is obviously very attractive, being less than half a mile from the, the entrance to Route 24, which is where most of the trucks would be heading out for the day. There would be very little use of the, the local surface roads in Brockton, except for the customers that are located in Brockton. Um, I know they have a couple like Northeast Electrical, Crown Linen, Foodland Distributors are a few of the customers of Diesel Direct. Um, that's the basics of our application. Happy to give more information or answer any questions that you might have. Um, are you planning on um, doing any renovations to the building itself? Question, I should have mentioned that. Um, at the moment, we don't have an exact plan for major renovations. We're certainly, it needs updating. Um, We're certainly going to repair or replace the roof, uh, the front of the building, bring it into conformity with the operations of the company. It, it, the Diesel Direct is a state-of-the-art company. All of the trucks are relatively new. We have brand new um, equipment on them. The 
the tech and the technology that's involved is new. We have, at all of our locations, we have extensive security in place, cameras, other security to make sure the trucks are secure when unattended. Uh, so we, the company has an image that it wants to, to keep up. So there would be renovations done to the building. Our, we do not have a plan to fully tear down or replace the building, but we do want to modernize it. Um, I would like to mention that if possible, I do have a, a handout of, that's a, basically a PowerPoint of the company that I would like to give you. I have a bunch here in case anybody else wanted one. I have more than enough here. Um, but yes, the, we would make improvements to the building. Um, you'll notice on the site plan that you have, part of the part of the use of the property will be to perform basic preventative maintenance inside in the bays that are located on the property and uh, washing of the vehicles. Uh, there's currently not the appropriate facilities for that. So the, the company would be installing a, the proper uh, oil, grease, water separators uh, before they did any washing or anything else required for um, the preventative maintenance, nothing major, oil changes, replacing lights, washing the vehicles. If there's anything major, it would be the trucks are taken to a, a third party, or are outsourced to a, a repair com company and the repairs are done offsite. I guess, hold on one second, do you guys have anything to add? Can you, Can you tell you us just reiterate once again what your hardship is on this piece of property other than the C2? Um, it was the, the change in use that from the C2 to the, or from the, sorry, from the I1 to the C2 zone created the hardship. So we're looking to end that hardship now. So you're telling us at one time this was zoned industrial? That is our understanding. And that the, the town changed it, understandably, uh, to allow the, the construction of the medical center, which is almost next door to the property. And that um, while the current, the current owner, who the owners are here with us tonight in support of our application, um, while they didn't object to it, they were not necessarily in favor with it because their use had been historically industrial and that they could continue that use, but not fitting, it did not fit with the character of the, the building and the general, the specific area where they were to change it to a C2. So they felt that while they certainly could continue their existing use, if there was even a slight change in the use, it, um, the, the change to the C2 zone created that hardship to them and to us now. Because the, the use of the, the character of the property is more industrial than commercial. Mr. So Chair, directly I... across from you is industrial. Correct. Then it goes to C2, and then I believe it goes to C5 as we get down further down the street. I did not get that far into it, but okay. Okay. There's three of them all come together. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh, can you address the situation with parking? Uh, I was looking at the number of vehicles that you are going to be using on this property, and I think you said 25 straight trucks and four 18-wheel trucks, and 25 to 30 support vehicles. What are you calling a support vehicle? Um, so the support vehicles is not entirely correct. It's a mixture of vans to I don't know if I can speak to the support vehicles exactly. It's, it, it's the truck, it, well, first of all, it's employees' personal vehicles are, are included in that, but also, oh, oh, uh, if you want to yeah, go ahead. speak yes, quickly. Yeah, my name is Gus Pesatoro, and uh, I represent Diesel Direct as well. Uh, we have, um, in that number would be the employees' vehicles, and would also be some box trucks that deliver uh, diesel fuel exhaust fluid. And, uh, you know, maybe a couple pickup trucks. Okay, so to clarify that, when I was looking at all these numbers, I was thinking that you have to have an employee that's gonna come to this place to drive all these trucks. 
they're going to come in their own vehicles. So now we got the vehicles plus the employees' vehicles. So you're saying this number of 25 to 30 includes your employees' vehicles also? That's correct. Okay. Just for more clarity on that, currently for the location, the operations that would be moving here, there are 15 total drivers, but that's across multiple shifts. Um, so fewer than that would be there at once. There are four mechanics, and how many office personnel? There's uh, two, uh, two to three office personnel, and they were different, and they would come in at different shifts as well. So, what are your what are your hours of operation at this place? Uh, the business is a 24/7 operation. Uh, however, we have two shifts. One shift would leave at approximately. Uh, 5 to 6 a.m., and the next shift would leave at approximately 3.30 p.m. And what time would they wrap up everything? Probably around midnight or so. <clears throat> and, and that would be for the trucks coming and going, if there's any maintenance or anything else to be performed at the property that's during regular business hours, 7 to or eight to five, seven to four, yeah, somewhere like about that. About seven to five p.m. Yeah. Okay. Now, of all these tanker trucks, the twenty-five straight trucks and four eighteen-wheelers, would they be leaving that property every day? Uh, I would. I would probably say, probably fifteen to seventeen would. Yes, at different times. The, they're staggered. The routes are staggered depending on what customers need fuel at what times so it isn't like one time where there'd be a, a flood of 10 trucks leaving at once yeah that was going to be my question is there a point during the day when you could drive by there and every truck is gone somewhere and then we come back later on and every truck is back so you're saying that you, you'd use about 17 going back and forth and there'd be a certain number that would still be sitting in the lot uh, yeah i would say probably around you know, one in the morning, you might have 12 to 13 there. Mm -hmm. So if we were looking at 5 a.m. for a start, what could you tell us about the number of trucks that might be leaving this facility between 5 a.m. and, say, 7 a.m.? Just to um, give us an idea of what it might look like. I would say probably 5 to 6. Over that two-hour period? Yes. Okay. I, I would just want to add that these trucks are all, I think I mentioned that these trucks are all relatively new, like four or five years old, um, state-of-the-art trucks that are- Diesel trucks? Diesel trucks. Yes. Uh, what, are they? They're yeah, they're, yeah. yeah, they're diesel trucks. Uh, none of the trucks have jake brakes on them, which would be uh, loud going down the road. They're very quiet trucks. What are the, what's the idle time or what's the regulations on idle time? Uh, you, what's the regulation on idle time? Right. How long can you park a diesel truck? There uh, I is think a, it's like two or three minutes, I think. Okay. Is that reasonable? Do you find that that's n normally uh, what they do, three minutes? Yeah, I, I would say that. You know, the driver uh, would come in, he does his DOT check, he punches in, and then takes the truck and goes. The trucks don't idle much on the property. I took a ride up to your facility in Stoughton, and I will say that the fleet that you have up there looks like it's a modern fleet. Looks like it's well cared for. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, all right. As we go along, there may be some more questions, but I think I, I hit the ones that I wanted to hit. So Can the alterations to the existing building, that steel frame building is going to stay as it is. It's just going to be spruced up. Is that the best way to put it? That's our plan at the moment, yes. Tear it down, build a new one, though. No, that is not our plan. Can you tell us a little bit about the storage of fuel? Like, uh, how is it going to be uh, moved onto the trucks, and how are you storing it on the facility? Go ahead. Uh, uh, the fuel is, the fuel, there's not going to be any uh, transferring of fuel on the property. We load the fuel, it would be in uh, Braintree or, or Quincy, Mass, in one of the terminals. The trucks come back with all different quantities and they leave with all different quantities. So not, you know, not a ton of storage on the property, but there might be 
two or three thousand gallons in each truck. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, there's no outside of truck storage, no okay. tanks on the property. Yes. So if this was approved, that could be a stipulation that would be put on there that there'll be no underground storage of fuel. That, yes, that would be fine with so us. The only fuel you're talking about is whatever fuel is in the trucks. Correct. That's correct. Uh, repairs to the trucks, will they all be done inside the building? No outside yard repairs? Yes. Other than something minor? Yes. That's correct. Yeah, and, and again, it's only, in, even inside, it's only minor repairs. Oil change, replace lights, maybe, maybe brakes? I don't maybe know. Maybe brakes. But. Small, small, minor repairs. Okay, I'll bring out uh, some information that has come to me from the planning department relative to Mill Street, so I'll, I'll just read this now. Uh, this petition will need to go through the site plan review if approved due to a change of use, which will require a full landscaping plan that substantially increased green space and internal tree cover. In other words, it won't be a sea of what we see up there now. They're gonna be looking for some kind of green space to be put in. Parking and street improvements, including vertical granite curbing separating the street from the parking lot. Right now, there's no delineation between your parking lot and Mill Street. So they're gonna to look to do something there just to delineate that, which would probably create a, a driveway type thing in and out of your property rather than just driving all over the place like right now. They will also need to pass through conservation as the property abuts wetlands with a portion of the property located in a FEMA flood zone A. And they, uh, the planning department says we will also need to address stormwater management. That's something you're gonna be involved with, I'm sure. So I just wanna bring out uh, those issues that even if this is approved tonight, there's a couple other steps that you're gonna have to go through here to, before you get there. And when I went up there and took a ride through the place, it really is just to see a blacktop with no delineation of anything up there. So I think what the planning is looking for is to clean up where the street is, uh, put some kind of access, maybe driveways, some trees, and the stormwater thing is a big thing now. Everybody's gotta go through that, and the conservation relative, you know there's a river right next to that place. Right, yeah, yes. Just north of it, so yeah. that's the concern there. All right, uh, any other questions from board members? Uh, yeah, how large is the company? I'm not too familiar with it. How many employees does the direct have? <laughs> about 1,500. 1,500 nationally? Yes. Okay. That's a good question. So your company is a national company all over the United States? Correct. Yeah. We're, we're in 48 states. 48 states. Okay. And to first... I deliver the first gallon. <laughs> we don't need to know that. <laughs> uh, just to embellish your question, how many people do you think would be employed at this site in Brockton? So that was... Uh, I'd say 15 to 20. 15 to 20 people? Yes, sir. All right, board members, any other questions before I move on? Everybody's good so far. Okay, I'm gonna close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? Yes, sir. Please give your name to the clerk. Certainly. Uh, my name is Carl Mayer. I live at 16 Shields Avenue, which is directly across the conservation land from the proposed uh, project. Um, so I had a lot of concerns and questions myself, but I met these gentlemen outside. They showed me the plans. Also regarding uh, noise, as the chairman asked about, uh, leaving trucks, all that sort of stuff. And they answered my questions quite satisfactorily. Uh, I've been down there for 30, a little over 30 years. I bought my house on Shields Ave, brand new. And I put up with doing the scaffolding for all that time. And they would load those trucks sometimes up until oh, midnight. And they weren't loading bread trucks. They were loading scaffolding. And they were, they were decent enough guys. They, they tried to do their best after conversations with them, but it was still extremely loud. Um, and their drivers were not considerate of the neighborhood, blowing air horns. One of them, one of the trucks actually had a train horn on it, which he would like to blow coming up the highway. So these gentlemen have addressed my concerns regarding that. 
Um, and uh, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't, why it would be a problem, at least on my end. There may be some residents here from Tilden Street who may have a different view, and of course, uh, we have to respect that too. But at this point, I have no objections whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you. Does your property back up to their property? No, I am on directly across on Pond Station there. But your backyard backs up to the river? Yes, it does not actually a river. It's yeah, Brook. A brook. Yeah, okay, and now. now it's nothing because of the summer that we've had. So if you come into your street from Mill Street, your house would be on the right hand side? Uh, correct. Yeah, okay, good. Yes. Thank you. Is there anyone else here that wants to speak in favor? Seeing none, I'll close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? Good evening. Please give your name to the clerk. Hi, I'm Steve Kelly. I live over at 45 Stonehill Street in Brockton. I've got concerns about Mill Street and you know, the whole Mill Street connector handling more trucks coming into that whole area. You know, uh, you know having more trucks in that area is really gonna hurt us. Now, are these trucks gonna be registered in Massachusetts in Brockton? Yes. Okay. Do you, you want to address your questions through the... Through okay, the sir, I was just wondering if the, tr you know, I saw a truck outside that said uh, for this company, uh, pickup truck, with the Stoughton address and it's registered in New Hampshire. So if we're gonna be getting trucks coming in, shouldn't Brockton receive the tax money for it? Because that was my question. Okay. I also have concerns about the wetland area adjacent to it. I really think that until the, this plan has gone through all the processes that this board holds off on it, we need more information before you can really make a plan on it. So I would request that you did lay a plan until you've got that information on it. Because really, I have serious concerns about more trucks coming through Belmont and Pearl Street. It's a dangerous area. We've had more accidents there. Uh, and I really have that concern. So I really would wait on making a decision until you see what the planning board has come up with. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, anyone else wants to speak in opposition? I'll close that portion here. Is there any elected official that wants to be heard on the issue? Councilor. Hi, um, Councilor Rita Mendez, and I also um, shared the concerns with the conservation lands, the wetlands that also needs to be looked at, and also that is a very busy intersection, so we've talked about that a lot, just having uh, these huge trucks coming into that intersection, so that is also something else to take into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other elected official who wants to be heard on the issue? Seeing none, I'm gonna close that portion of the hearing. Uh, I'm gonna ask a question of the petitioner. Uh, <laughs> I, I made a note and I skipped it. Are these trucks gonna be registered in Brockton or are they registered everywhere? Would, probably you should address that. We have, uh, we're, as I said, we operate in 48 states. We have a lot of trucks registered in a lot of different yep. states. So. The trucks that will be parked in Brockton will be registered in Massachusetts. Okay, so Brockton will get the tax revenue from whatever. It will get the excise tax revenue, yes. Okay, that was my question. Yes. Very good, thank you. All right, I'm gonna close that portion of the hearing, which is the public hearing that's closed. I'm now gonna open it up for deliberations among the board members. Board members. I like that it's, it wouldn't, uh, well, it would need site plan review. It's, you know, it would have to stop in that, in that process. Um, it would have to see conservation. So um, the place is a dump right now. It would add jobs, that's, some, that's just my opinion. Yeah, definitely needs some upgrading. Um, I mean, it is pretty much in an industrial area. Right across the street there's industrial, so uh, if they were there, the trucks uh, would be coming and going uh, you know, with no issues. Um, 
I thought we'd have an issue with maybe a neighbor, but a neighbor, and I, that's why I was asking about idle times, would it be keeping people up at night? Three minutes, a direct neighbor doesn't mind. That was really, It, it seems know. to be buffered pretty much with the uh, conversation. Con right. con uh. yeah, it's a kind of ironic, if you look at the zoning map, if they move across the street, they don't even have to come to us. They can just move in because it's industrial, right? Directly across the street. So they're kind of caught in a precipice here of three zones that come right to their front door. Pretty unique what the situation is up here. But I, I think it's important that we all got to realize that if they want to move into this property, we're only one step that's involved here. Mm -hmm. And for the benefit of the board, it looks like they're going to have to go to site plan review, mm -hmm. which will be planning board, uh, which will require some kind of a landscaping plan and some kind of a plan on how they're going to lay out the parking and street improvements, including vertical granite curbing. So I think what they're looking for is just to make a separation between Mill Street and their parking lot. And you guys in the planning can straighten that thing out. And it's all go also going to have to go through conservation, whatever they got to do because of the brook that's up there and the stormwater management. Uh, J.K. Holmgren, where are you? Hiding. Yeah, you're hiding behind there. Can you... <clears throat> I'm going to stray from the meeting just a little bit here. Can you just explain to us what your part is in all this with the stormwater management and... Kind of give us an idea what that's going to entail. Just on the whole process, we can't go to planning board right now before we have EPA approval. Correct. Once we get the EPA approval, then we can get comp on approval. Then we can go to site plan. Right. So we can't get to site plan before it, but uh, you folks can get some comp on it before. But as far as uh, stormwater management goes, all of the buildings that are designated to use, whether they're commercial zone, residential, commercial zone, commercial, uh, the department stormwater So there's nothing unusual about that. That's pretty much standard. Every single site we've got to take Okay, so just to make sure we kind of understand what is looked at here as far as parking and street improvements, I'm sure you've probably discussed with them how they need to straighten out that situation with the street. Yeah. So that's in the plans. Very good. Thank you. Uh, board members, we're still in our discussion phase here, so. Motion to grant. Uh, I was going back to something first, oh. but. <laughs> oh, go ahead. On the motion. I was going to say, go I ahead. think uh, bringing an established company like this into the city is going to be good for the city. Um, that that property does need some upgrading. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I'll second the, <laughs> the motion. <laughs> All right, on the motion, I just want to make sure that we understand from the testimony that we heard tonight, uh, it doesn't sound like there's going to be a fueling facility at this location to fuel your trucks. Do you fuel those off-site? You do yeah. off-site, okay. Off and we also talked about that there will be no underground on-site storage of fuel. So the way I understand this is these trucks, when they come in, they're going to be parked in the yard. They may have fuel in the tank which is no different than perhaps cars parking at Westgate Mall. And when they go out to make a delivery, somewhere during the day, they'll fuel their truck up somewhere that's off-site. Correct. That's correct. All right, so we have a motion made and seconded to grant. Is that correct? Yes. yes. With, with the stipulations. All right. Let's with, move on then. With those stipulations in place, right? With the stipulation that there'll be no on-site storage of diesel fuel. I think that was the only one I wanted, so. Only in the truck. That's correct. I'm talking putting an underground, underground. tank in and storing 10,000 gallons. 
You might get permission from somebody else to put it there, but you're not going to get it from us. <laughs> All right, so will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Leanis? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Spinola? Uh, yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Ms. Hodges? Yes. Chair Galligan? Yes. Chair, that is five in the affirmative, none in the negative. All right, the vote is five in the affirmative, none in the negative. The petition is granted. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, the next petition, 2286 of Alex Malo, 753 Pleasant Street, Brockton, Mass, for a special permit. From, yeah. Article 14, Section 2769, to erect a new sign on the roof of the store, which is not allowed in an I-1C zone located 753 Pleasant Street. Isn't this Jake's? Yes. Jake, Jake had it last month. He had it last time. Yep. Attorney, can there. you just take a peek out there and see if he's out there? schedule it for tonight. Yep. Yeah, and we postponed it last month. Yep. I didn't get nothing for the schedule for tonight. Okay. What I'm going to do is move that case till the end of the evening and we'll move on to the next case. Number 2287, the petition of Daniel P. Gill Jr., care of Nezzarella, 1063 North Main Street, Brockton, Mass. For a variance, from section 27.9, seeking relief from frontage setback of 12.1 feet, rear yard setback of 5.6 feet to construct outdoor stairs to second floor in an R2 zone located at 397 Court Street. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Attorney Philip Nesrella representing Daniel Gill, who is here this evening. Uh, Daniel Gill is a well-known individual who was uh, in the plaster sheetrock business in and around the Brockton area. Uh, Mr. Gill is the owner of the property in question at 397 Court Street. He is seeking to have allowed the erection of a uh, set of stairs going from the ground floor to the second floor to allow a second means of access and e egress, which did not previously exist. Mr. Gill uh, after he had acquired the property several years ago, had been renting it out, and uh, recently he went to renovate the second floor, and the building department told him that he needed zoning relief. So this application or presentation will be a little different because I'm going to give the board an explanation for the basis of a zoning variance, and there's an alternate um, avenue which I'm going to suggest to them as well. Uh, firstly, the property stands and looks as a two-family residence. It uh, requires, according to today's zoning um, regulations, both area lot size relief, uh, front yard, and rear yard setback relief. The uh, relief sought for area lot size would be 3,420 square feet, square feet and for front setback would be 12.1, uh, rear setback 5.6 feet. Uh, the side yard and um, um, frontage is, uh, is met by the existing dimensions. Uh, the basis for why we would ask this relief by way of a variance is twofold. One, 
clearly we need it in order to continue using the second floor. And it has minimum, uh, minimum uh, infringement on the side yard or any of the dimensions I'm seeking relief in. In fact, the area in the lot is very comparable and similar to all of those in the neighborhood. I had uh, attached to my application this little plan here showing the lot. And you will see all of the lots in the area are basically of a rectangular type of shape. This particular lot is an odd shape, which is spoken to by chapter 40A, section 10. Variances may be given if there is an odd shape lot, which infringes on the use of the property. In this particular shape, for all you guys who skipped out on high school geometry, is a rhombus. It's a modified rhombus, which is a quadrilateral um, structure or formation, except it doesn't have four equal sides. It's almost like a uh, modified diamond. Um, that has deterred the ability to have the rear yard set back in some of the other dimensions that are required. But then again, when you look at it, when you look at the uh, plan, it's not much different than all of the other lots on Court Street as far as frontage. So other than this odd shape lot, which we would find that if a variance were not allowed or if it were to be allowed, uh, the relief that we are seeking would not affect the general zoning district. The uh, literal enforcement of the zoning code saying the amount of square footage that we need would cause a financial hardship by disallowing the use of that second floor. And if the relief is granted, there would be no substantial detriment to the surrounding neighborhood because it's minimal relief we are seeking and we are still gonna be conforming with the general nature of the, the neighborhood. So if I were looking for a variance, that's the basis I would lay out to you. The more I got into uh, reviewing this and I tend to go over and over and over uh, these types of applications, I, I realized I don't think we need a variance. I'm not sure why I'm even here this property was erected, constructed in 1900. It's been operating for 122 years as a two family. It's been operating since 1967 as a two family. Mr. Gills used it in, as such, and the predecessor who we bought it from has been using it as a two family. I went down to the great repository in the bowels of City Hall today in the uh, assessor's office and I found these two documents which basically state, uh, and they were very, very cooperative and, and um, helpful, uh, the street list from the city of Brockton from 1963 and 1961. And there's, uh, you'll note on the second page, highlighted in yellow, it'll show 397 Court Street with two families, one on the first floor, one on the second floor. One uh, individual was a shoe worker, the other one was a, a laborer, which was basically the whole reason all these properties in Watt 5 came to be. It was to assist the shoe workers in the influx of uh, labor that we had in the city of Brockton from the turn of the century. And I have no doubt that's why we have all the multifamilies on, in Watt 5. Uh, I'm pretty familiar with the area. I grew up down the street from there and uh, the whole area is surrounded by properties of that nature. So. My presentation uh, to the board members in the alternate theory is that this is a pre-existing non-conforming use, which should have been uh, given a determination earlier on by the building department. So I, I don't understand why I, I ended up over here, but nonetheless, again, I have two very plausible concrete and solid basis for the relief, one by way of a variance. And secondly, which I, I would suggest the board find is to make a determination this is a pre-existing non-conforming use, therefore not uh, constrained or obligated under current regulations by the uh, Brockton zoning ordinances. With that, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to respond. Why are you asking for relief for the stairway? Scott. But 
then again, if you adopt the, the second um, theory of non-conforming use, I don't think it's relative that we need to be getting relief for the stairs. So at any point in recent past history, did this building go from a two family to a one family? Not that I'm aware of. For whatever reason, and there was no explanation tendered by the assessor's office why it's listed as single family. And as we know, assessor's records do not control, they're superseded by the building department, and the building department has it zoned as a two family. So I, I can't explain why, where, and how they came up with a statement as a single family. Well, that was going to be my question that when they assessed that building, was it a single family at that time? In other words, did it go from two to one and then went back to two? Uh, I, may, I, made that, I made that inquiry uh, at the assessor's office, and they had no historical uh, background on it or indication or information as to why that would happen. So uh, I'm looking at this chart, and you're listing eight parking places when you only need four. So there's more than enough parking on this Correct. property. Correct. Um, how did you get to us as far as this second means of egress? Was there something that caused that to become an issue? Mr. Uh, Gill wanted to renovate a bathroom. And in that process, before the building department, he was uh, informed that there would be no use allowed on the second floor. I see, okay. So that's how this whole thing came about. That, that's how it came about. All right. So one of the, one of the ways this just could be handled is we can grant a variance to say that it's a two family house and grant your relief from side front yard setback, rear yard setback and all that goes away. That's, that's an option. That's, yeah, there are two options. Two options. That and the determination, this board is empowered to make a determination that it's a pre-existing non-conforming use and we go on our way and... Uh, Until we, that gets challenged. Correct. If, if, we, if you're granted a variance, then it's over and done with. Correct. Yeah, okay. All right, I understand the history behind this thing. If I did the same thing. I went back to 1900, and I found in the listing that it was listed as a cottage two-family. So back when it was built, it was a two-family, and my question was, did it go from two to one back to two, and how did you get here? And I think you've answered all those questions. And as far as the setback from the street, that is what it was in 1900. And you, we can't bring it into conformance now because you obviously can't move the foundation of the house. That's correct. But anyway, yeah. All right, board members, any questions? What, what, what was the reason, if the building department has it as a two family, what was the reason he was told he couldn't build? Just because of the second means of egress? Correct. And that was the only uh, which is a credible reason Absolutely. to deny it uh, for safety purposes that there was no second means. Okay. I just wanted, I didn't know if maybe there was something else they had in mind because we cut off. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Board members, we all set? Good. Okay. Close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion. I'm going to ask, is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? I have a letter that has come in regarding 397 Court Street. This party is from Provo Street. I am against this position of Daniel Gill, 10 Security North Main Street, by for variance from Section 25, seeks relief from frontage setback of 12.1 feet, rear yard setback 5.6, to construct outdoor stairs to the second floor in R2 zone located at 397 Court Street. This will encroach too much on our property. They are creating a problem to try to get relief. This should be denied as it's too much and it will be used to make more units that the lot cannot support. So we have established that this is not encroaching on anybody else's property, number one, and we are not making more units because the more units are already there. Correct? Correct. That's how I see it too. All right, anyone else want to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there any public official who wants to be heard on the issue? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. That concludes the public discussion. I'm going to open up the board members. Let's say the 
Uh, I, my thing is just obviously if it's if it's a two family, it needs a second means of egress, so w it puts us in a puts uh, myself safety wise in a precarious position. Obviously, if it's if it's that, it should be granted in my opinion. Just because if Mr. Gill wants to build, he's going to have to get people have the potential to get people out of that second floor. So that's right. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, and uh, the setbacks are all consistent with the other uh, properties on there too. So. Um, I don't think it impacts the neighbors, considering the, the lot. Right. Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to grant. Second. Oh, okay, on the motion, motion's been made second, but on the motion, uh, it was proposed that we could make a finding. Uh, I'm of the opinion that if we grant the variance, it'll put the whole thing to bed. And if we grant the finding, somebody can come down the road and want to challenge that. So what's your... Pleasure on that. You want to do it? Say, go with the, let's do the variance, grant. cleans it up. All right. So the motion has been made a second to grant a variant to allow for a second floor two family with the relief from the setbacks that are shown on the plan. All right. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Lanis? Yes. Mr. Spinola? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Chief Nardelli? Yes. Chair Gallagher. <coughs> Chair, that is five in the affirmative, none in the negative. Vote is five in the affirmative, none in the negative. The petition is granted. Thank you. <coughs> Good luck. All right, Phil, come up here for a minute. I'm going to have a two minute recess. Zoning board meeting is reconvened. The last case before us tonight is case number 2286, the petition of Alex Mallow, 753 Pleasant Street, Brockton, Mass, for a special permit from Article 14, Section 2769 to erect a new sign on the roof of the store, which is not allowed in an R1C zone located 753 Pleasant Street. Is there anyone here for this case? Seeing no one here to represent the case, uh, 
Board members, I'm going to suggest that we deny the application and have the petitioner refile. Is we, nobody here to represent? We need a motion on that. Need a motion on that. Yeah. Motion to grant. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to grant. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Lianis. No. Mr. Spinola. What is it uh, on the motion? What, what is a no? What does a yes and a no vote say? Yes to deny. No to not deny. So. Can we start over? What, so the motion was, oh, the motion was to, to, grant. to grant. So in the grant. negative it would it. be to it. deny. Okay. Mr. Leanis. No. Mr. Spinola. No. Mr. Sweeney. No. Chief Nardelli. No. Chair Gallagher. No. Chair, that is five in the negative, zero in the affirmative. All right, the vote is none in the affirmative, five in the negative. The petition is denied. That is the final case to come before us tonight. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. We are adjourned.